Hello and welcome to another look at the Capcom Arcade Cabinet stuff from Capcom and this is the third edition. I'm Martin Baker, Deputy Editor at GodIsAGeek.com and the first game that we're going to be looking at is 1986's Legendary Wings. I say 1986, don't know why I say 1986, all of these games from 1986, that's the point of the Capcom Arcade Cabinet. Nevertheless, this was released in 1986 as I just said. It's, um, an interesting title, it's another game you've heard me say before on these previous uh, Capcom Arcade collections that a lot of these games, because I was born in 1986, a lot of these games I haven't heard of or I haven't had the chance to play until now. A couple of that I have, like uh, Ghosts and Goblins from last week, but this one, nope, never even heard of it before. But I was quite quite interested in the, uh, like the vertical shooter aspect of it and then it in these certain areas you're going to inside like I just went into the uh, Titan-esque thing's mouth and now it's like a side-scrolling shooter similar to uh, Ghosts and Goblins I was quite interested with that it's, uh, it's, a, it's a nice change of pace and something that because I'd never heard of the game before and so obviously never played it uh, it's something that I wasn't expecting and it's quite, quite a pleasant surprise this part is, uh, is very similar to uh, Ghosts and Goblins as you heard me say last week, there was since Ghosts and Goblins came out, there was a lot of uh, copies, basically. There was a lot of things that took the inspiration from Ghosts and Goblins and uh, made it their own. And this is obviously one of them. If you saw me struggle around with the, uh, the like ogre troll section of the first level, second level of Ghosts and Goblins last week, then uh, you can understand how I felt when I entered this part of the game, this part of the uh, uh, legendary wings. <laughs> Wasn't best pleased, assumed that I was going to die instantly, but there's plenty of lives, so it's not something that happened. As you get to the end of these uh, side scrolling sections, there's like a little mini boss that you have to defeat, which is the, the thing in the middle there. Once it's defeated, easy enough, you go back up the pipe and out of the Titan thing's mouth again, back into the uh, vertical shooter aspect. Another thing that I found interesting about Legendary Wings is that if you press the A button on the Xbox controller, which is X on PlayStation or whatever, um, you find like a normal, you know, the normal ammo, normal weapons that go along your the way the level that you're playing. If you press the X button on the Xbox controller or the B button, uh, you do the the, the bombs that you can see me doing now, where you, you uh, attack things on the floor. Which is a nice change of pace. Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to attack the things on the floor with the uh, the weapons that you're firing up in the sky. So you have to you have to be mindful of the things on the floor as well as the things that are coming up straight at you, basically. Nice, nice little change. Keep you keep you on your toes. Make sure that you're paying attention to not only the things that are coming at you, but the things that are on the floor and potentially shooting at you at times. This section is also something that I wasn't expecting from a game from 1986. Uh, you can see while I was firing that they're being deflected by the sprites of the golden eagle things. I wasn't expecting that, I was expecting the sprite of the, of the ammo, the, the thing that I'm firing, to just go straight through them. I didn't expect them to be deflected, so that's quite a nice surprise as well. One thing that I noticed as well is that it's got a, yeah, a reticule. I don't remember seeing that as often as I would have expected. Uh, so it's quite a surprise to see, see in this game. That's the uh, end of the first level, I believe. Oh, it's not the end of the first level. It's another one of those um, side-scrolling bits to lead towards the, the end of the first level. All of these side-scrolling bits are, uh, are more or less the same thing. It's uh, a selection of ladders, selection of enemies. You should have to... It's almost a maze in the sense that sometimes you're not going to know whether the ladder that you're going up or down is the right direction. You just got to hope that it's the right direction. Um, but it's not it's not too difficult, especially in these earlier levels. It's uh, it's not that much of a maze. It's just you might go up one that happens to be a dead end. Most of the time you'll be going in roughly the right direction. One thing that's uh, obvious about this as well is that if you go so far to the right hand side of the screen the, while the screen does scroll right as you're walking right it doesn't scroll left again so if you make a mistake if you walk past a, a ladder that you think you're going to have to need you're going to need to go down 
uh, you're not going to be able to go back and, and go down it so you're going to have to make those decisions uh, quite early on making sure that you don't walk too far to the right before you uh, get where you want to be this is the uh, the boss of this section again it's a it's an enemy in the middle you just have to shoot him and then exit and that's the end of the uh, the first game that's legendary wings so now we're looking at trojan again from 1986 like i said um this legendary rings was two player co-op you could play two player co-op you can even play it online uh, thanks to the wonders of the internet in this modern age trojan is totally different trojan is technically two players in the sense that you can alternate you can you know it's old school gaming in that if you die you just swap the control or give the control to somebody else somebody else gets to go there's no co-op it's not it's not final fight it's not something that you expect from uh, from later on where you get multiple people even though it looks like a game that would serve multiple people on the screen at the same time it's, it's not um it's two player alternating not two player co-op one thing about this game as well that obviously i haven't mastered this early on is the fact that you've got a weapon and a shield and the key to success in Trojan is utilising that shield. It's not easy at all. Uh, there's no there's no tells from the animations that where they're going to attack. Sometimes they'll attack high, sometimes they'll attack low and you're just expected to anticipate or guess where they're going to shoot and where they're going to punch or whatever their attack happens to be. A lot of the time um, you won't anticipate that. Right? Thankfully there's no, uh, there's no no putting money into this game. Uh, it's, it's not an arcade game. Uh, you just press continue. And there's, uh, I wouldn't say there's copious amounts of checkpoints but you see I just but beat those two mini bosses type of things that will have activated the checkpoint. So if I die, and I probably will die any time soon, uh, I'll just go back to that part and just have to do this last section again. I won't have to do the entire level again. It's not that brutal, because you will die a lot. Uh, like I said, you, you have to block. at exactly the right time most of the time. And you don't get that much health. There we go, dead again. But I, I, as I said, I, you don't have to go back to the beginning, you just got to do one section again so it's not it's not too bad one other thing as well that i have actually noticed is that uh, you don't have to clear the area like a lot of these side scrolling fighters you sometimes have to clear the area before you can move on to the next place you don't have to here you can just jump over enemies attack the, the ones that are coming in front of you ignore the ones behind you and just keep walking forward It'll get you to the. You won't get as much points doing that. You won't get as much uh, respect from doing that, I suppose. But uh, it's, it's, a, it's a method of play. It's, it's, you can play it like that if you want. That's how I chose to play it eventually. Run away from things, as you can see. But yeah, halfway through the levels, you get these like the light mini bosses, and when you beat them, you'll you get bonus points and uh, you get told basically that you've uh, just checkpointed. This this second level, I'm, I'm not sure if I got easier, I got better at the game or whether I started to be able to tell what the enemies were, do, were going to do, but this, uh, this second level seems a lot easier than the first one. The yeah, boss of the second level already. Not as many uh, problems as I had with the first level, keep dying. This next level was difficult though, I wasn't I wasn't sure what was expected. I I expected it to be like those those typical old school fighter games where you just have to clear everybody until you get told to move. But that wasn't the case. Uh, the sprite on the right hand side that looks like a, the top floor of an elevator. Is what you're supposed to be standing on. I didn't know that at first and just kept beating the living crap out of everybody that came my way. You're gonna get, you're gonna get points doing that. 
good amount of points, but yeah, you're gonna die quite quickly and you're not gonna get any further in the level. Eventually, I figured it out. You keep going down. This is a, uh, an interesting level because it's a vertical level. It's, you're not going from left to right like you normally do in these fighters. Uh, you're going from top to bottom, which is an interesting take on it. It's not something that I've seen done that often. So it, it was nice to see. I like the enemies as well, just random, you, you get like futuristic or post-apocalyptic generic thugs and then you just randomly get Romans, gladiators for, for no reason, you never get, uh, typical old school, you never get told why you're fighting certain things but yeah, Romans just randomly seem to turn up for some reason, you don't question it, just beat in the face. There's the uh, the halfway down mini boss, so you know that you only go have to start back from there again if you uh, if you die, and you probably will die, or I probably will die. See so something that you can see the sprite for the elevator not appearing until you're on that level. That's something that uh, wouldn't get away with nowadays. <laughs> people would, in an age where people find the tiniest thing to complain about, the fact that the sprite doesn't appear until you're on that level, will probably be the first thing that people complain about. But well, that's the joy of old school, they're not perfected. And they didn't have to patch them like they do nowadays. Nowadays you can, you can release a game with, with bugs, it's get patched. Oh well, final boss of this level, and final boss. Not of the game, but final boss of what we'll see today in Trojan. That's Trojan. It's quite an interesting little game. And last but not least is Sidearms, released as you can see in the end of 1986 but still 1986. This game, similarly to Legendary Wings, is two player color or it has the potential of being two player color if you want. You can also play it online. Two player color online sounds like a perfect game. Say uh, Legendary Wings is a top down shooter, this is a side-to-side -side scrolling shooter. Died instantly. It's a good start. It's got the typical um, Capcom power-ups we've seen in multiple games now. So uh, you don't really see that often nowadays. Uh, one publisher using um, using the same icon for a power-up across all games. It's quite iconic. Quite memorable. Yeah, this is uh, side arms is uh, your generic, basic side scrolling shooter. Just shoot everything that comes to you. Um, you do, you can use similar to uh, section Z, section Z. Still can't decide what I'm going to call that game, but similar to that game last time, uh, you can shoot left and right. I mean, in this in this early level, in this first level, most of the things will come at you from the right hand side, unless you let things get behind you, but. Yeah, it's, it's the first level. You shouldn't be letting things get behind you in the first level. Uh, if they do get behind you, you can turn around and shoot. Obviously, now that I've upgraded my suit, I don't need to turn around and shoot because I've got a weapon that shoots backwards from me. But yeah, on the Xbox control, it's A to shoot forwards and X to shoot backwards. I'm sure it's the equivalent buttons on the PlayStation. There also have other buttons that you can use to do that. Um, a and X was just easier for me to use, but um, as we've seen in the other Capcom games, because these games generally just use two buttons, and we've got a multitude of buttons on the Xbox controller, uh, a lot of them are mapped to two buttons that you generally had back then. This is the first boss of the first level. Inside us, it's easy enough. Dodge the, dodge the bullets, shoot it, collect all the power-ups. Even though you're going to move on to the, the next part of the, or the next level now, it's similar to Section Z in the sense that, well, you did just see the next section just appear randomly with no reason, you know, no story reason as to why that part just opened up, just it did. So you get, you get with it. Um, there's no loading screens, which is quite impressive. Uh, normally you'd see, especially at a game of this age, 
you'd see loading screens like we did in Trojan where it's just show you an animation of where you were in the game now. Uh, even something as simple as that, it's, it's kind of a hidden loading screen, but it's a loading screen nonetheless. You don't see that here. It's quite impressive. You just get on with the uh, with the gameplay. I mean, the loading screen is there. It's hidden in the fact that you know the animation of the boss dying or that's the sprite appearing, waiting for for the uh, actions to become active again. The loading process is there, it's just hidden, you're not going to get any massive loading screen or anything like that, so it seems seamless. Typical from these uh, side-scrolling shooters as well, you get a lot of the same enemies as you progress, uh, with some being filtered out for enemies that do that do increase damage or that are harder to kill so you get some stuff that you've seen before that filtered through with things that you haven't like the, the little centipede type enemy that was uh, just a few seconds ago that I'm sure we'll see again but the, mo the majority of the enemies are, uh, are the same as uh, the previous level just to help with that familiarity really so that you know what you're doing you don't, no confusion as to how to kill things Easy on the player, more enjoyment. So we're almost at the, uh, the final boss of the second stage, which is uh, very similar to the end boss of the first stage, in that it's uh, just an enemy that appears on the right hand side of the screen. So the centipede thing there, you have to dodge while you're shooting it in the face. But yeah, eventually the, uh, the end boss will appear and is just typical right inside the screen, shoot it until it's dead, although this one starts to spin faster as its uh, health is depleted and shoots more bullets that you've got to dodge while, uh, while shooting it, which can be quite difficult considering how much space he takes up. But that's sidearms, that is that is dead, and uh, we'll see you again with uh, Collection 4 of the Capcom Arcade Collection.